Black Ram 313 back at it again. You know why? It's because this is therapeutic, man. Back again with another video, hence another therapy session. Today's topic and title is No Hymen, No Diamond. Now, I've been seeing this mantra a lot lately, particularly in my comment section and in the comment section of other YouTubers of such a like genre. So I did a little research and found out that this is actually the name of a Facebook group that is promoting and has promoted the idea that without her virginity, she doesn't deserve the diamond ring. Hence, marriage. Of course, such an idea received tons of backlash from females because in her mind and in the mind of the larger society, there is a belief that only the woman is allowed to have preferences in dating and not you as a man. But this mantra is proof positive that there are some men who are starting to wake up and starting to realize their own worth and value. Men are starting to set standards and hold her accountable to such standards. Now, of course, finding a virgin is unrealistic. But how about a woman with a lower body count? How about a body count under five if you're going to consider her wifey material, at least in theory, because it's impossible to truly know what her real body count is. She's not going to reveal this in truth. But what is a reasonable number, a reasonable amount of bodies to consider her wifey? Let me know in the comments section what is a reasonably low number. Now, the key word here is reasonable. I know you're going to put zero. Don't put zero. I'm asking you what is reasonable. Understand the world in which we now live because, you know, zero is highly unlikely. Moving along. Now, to me, thinking of this whole idea of no hymen, no diamond. And thinking of the reverse of that one who's rolled the carousel. To me, it is nonsense for a man to go through school, earn good grades, get advanced degrees or trade, then put himself to the task of hard work, discipline, self-sacrifice, staying out of trouble, delayed gratification in such things. And then to take those accomplishments, to take that hard work and invite a dirty Dirty, D-U-R-D-D-Y, a dirty succubus into his life to reap the benefits of all of his hard work. Now, this is after she has ridden the carousel for many years with Thuggo and Nim, and whom know nothing about such aforementioned hard work, sacrifices, and discipline. If she can't offer you her chastity, then she, in fact, has nothing. To offer. It's very disappointing to me to see men devalue themselves and pedestalize the local thought. But this is slowly now changing. Guys are now seeing the scam and are a little less willing to play the rigged game set up for her to win, aided and abetted by the state. Now, Mr. Limba, shout out to him, mentioned in the comment section of one of my videos. A concept I'm familiar with, but it's worth repeating here. In ancient Israelite society, once the cookies have been broken into, there is blood. The shedding of blood in Israelite culture denotes a covenant, which is a contract, which is a commitment, which is the real definition of marriage, not your state contract. But a contract between male and female and their God. Now in ancient Israelite culture, if a man wanted to marry, he requests such from the father of the bride and a dowry or bride price would be paid. She was property and she goes from one owner to another, from her father to her husband. By the way, husband in the Hebrew and Greek means Lord, master, owner. This is why 
She goes from her father's last name to her husband's last name. I find it funny that some don't want to take their husband's last name, trying to be, I guess, strong and independent. But the funny thing about that, Miss Strong and Independent, and since you're so smart, the last name you have still belongs to a man. It just happens to be your father. But anyway, so she's also walked down the aisle at a wedding. She's given away by her father to her husband, a transference of ownership. Now, the Americans, the Western world gets this from ancient Hebraic culture. And in that culture and time, the bride was expected to be a virgin. If she was not found to be such, hence no blood, then a major crime or fraud was committed. The contract was simple. The female received protection and provision in exchange for her virginity, childbearing and loyalty. But today, the average thought wants the same protection and provision for the used vag and for the children she has had with other men. Such a disgrace. And she has the nerve to want to wear a white dress on a wedding day, which is symbolic of purity and chastity. The dress she wears, the thought speaking of on her wedding day should be black to represent the graveyard. That is the vag that she has all smelly and very used up. Then you have guys asking the sons of single moms for their mother's hand in marriage. Now, there is no limit to the degradation that the simp would submit himself to and wifing up the modern strumpet. She wants a diamond to show that this man that she's marrying has resources. But what do you get in return? Not only is there no benefit, but what you get is an adult to be responsible for, along with her children in most cases. Now, instead of getting zero, we're dealing with negative numbers now. Look how far manhood and integrity has fallen in this current age and in this current system. Men now are starting to stand and demand that no hymen, no diamond. Without that, she's not qualified to truly be wifey. It still somewhat amazes me that most succubi have had more experience than the average guy. Her vag blown to bits due to her being free communal property. But yet and still she demands to have a ring put on her hand in marriage, even after 10 plus years on the carousel. Just like marrying literally a streetwalker. Now, if you ask most guys, they would say no. If you directly ask them if they would wife up a professional streetwalker. But the average succubus, again, is no different. Having just as many bodies on her as the professionals do. And since she's far from a wife, mentally, physically, by her actions and attitude. Therefore, she should just be a fun night from time to time. Keep it casual and keep it occasional. That's the model. Casual and occasional. That's all she is worth, if even that. Let her provide and protect herself. And we can do our thing when she comes over. If you know what I mean, fair exchange, no robbery. The biggest issue for many in modern dating, what's most hypocritical in modern dating, is that a man is expected to be traditional, to stay with conforming to old and outdated traditional values of provision and protection. And of course, this is what society defines as what real manhood is. Meanwhile, she is new school and liberated from traditional expectations of chastity, silence and submission. But instead, she chooses to be loose, aggressive and very opinionated in which society now defines as real womanhood. You notice the change. Notice the paradigm shift. So I say then let her be liberated, but liberate yourself, too, by keeping her as a late nighter from time to time. And don't give her your protection 
or provision if she can't give you her hymen and obedience. You should only provide and protect what you own and control. Let her be strong and independent. The strong and independent woman who's loose as a goose. Don't try to own it. Just use it until she finds the next ride to get on. It's her world. Sit back and watch it burn in flames. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification button so that you will not miss a Black Round 313 video. Like a one on one consult, email description or email link in the description box, along with the PayPal and Patreon link. Do what you will with those resources. And until next time, Black Ram 313, and I'm out.